joining us now here on America's Healthcare Challenge. We're on the road down I-80 to Lincoln, visiting with the governor of the great state of Nebraska, Dave Heineman. Thank you so much for your time uh, here on the program. Great to have you here. You know, I really, Great to be here, actually. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for coming to Nebraska. We're proud of our state. Uh, we always have more work to do, but I think we're headed in the right direction. Let's talk about your State of the State address, because you outlined three priorities that you see for the state as we move forward, and a couple of them go hand-in-hand hand with, you know, the the message of America's Healthcare Challenge, which is educating and, and getting things out. So could we talk about uh, your first two priorities, and, and then we'll dive into some of these more specific issues. You know, my number one priority in, in, in this session is to provide tax relief to middle class families, farmers, ranchers, and small business owners, because this is about the future, creating more jobs, higher paying jobs, putting more money in the hands of our people and their businesses, and let them decide how they want to spend and invest that money. That's how we continue to grow as a state. The second uh, issue that's very important to me is uh, the Medicaid expansion, Obamacare's Medicaid expansion program is optional. The United States Supreme Court said that. We simply can't afford it. It's irresponsible to go down that path, and let me explain why. First of all, there are two funding issues, one at the state level, one at the federal level. The three major budget items for almost every state in America, certainly true of Nebraska, Medicaid, your university and higher education, and K-12 spending. So if you want to dramatically increase uh, Medicaid spending, which is what will happen with the expansion, you're going to cut into the education of our children. I think the education of our children ought to be the priority. Secondly, the federal funding side, side of it. The federal government is $17 trillion in debt, and anybody who believes they're going to fulfill their promise, I've got some land in the Pacific Ocean I'd like to sell you. It isn't going to happen. They said they would fund special education at 40 percent. They funded at about 18 or 19 percent. So if they don't come through on this, it's even more expensive for the states, cutting education further or raising taxes. Both of both options I oppose. Yeah, you know, you really uh, struck a chord with me. We're talking with the governor of the great state of Nebraska, Dave Heineman, and talking about federal funds and your job running the budget of, of the state of Nebraska. I don't know if you noticed about the downgrade for some of these public insurance companies uh, because there's they don't know if they're going to get paid. Could you kind of help our listeners understand that? I mean, it's got to be tough to try and you know run a business or a state government if you don't know if you're going to get paid. Uh, we believe in a very fundamental financial principle that is very, very important that sometimes the federal government has forgotten about. We don't spend money we don't have. Very simple. If you don't spend money you don't have, you don't get in trouble in your family budget, your business budget, or in government. And that is an underlying principle uh, in the state of Nebraska that our citizens believe in. That's why we're in, in better economic shape than the rest of the country. Uh, we're ranked number one, two, or three in a lot of categories, particularly for fiscal responsibility. And so that's key. And, and if you can't pay your bills, you know what's going to happen. And, and I just want you to know, I'm a governor that believes the federal government ought to move towards a balanced budget. So I'm not asking, hey, fund my favorite program. You've got to look at your priorities back at the federal level, begin to get those lines in balance. And if that means that we have to take reductions at the state level. All I ask, tell me at the beginning of the fiscal year, not in the 10th month. If you tell me at the beginning of the fiscal year, we can adjust, we'll move forward. So can you talk to us a little bit more about that? This, it seems like they're just not on the same wavelength between the, the federal and the state government. And, you know, I mean, yeah, what, what's going on there? Uh, they're not. And, and, and what's happened at the federal level, unfortunately, is they've become too partisan, too personal, and they don't listen to each other's ideas. If the Democrat has a good idea, the Republicans are going to oppose it. The Republicans got a good idea, the Democrats are going to oppose it. Well, you know, I say all the time here in Nebraska, when I'm the governor of this great state, I have a 1.8 million person board of directors, and they are not bashful about sharing their opinions with me. But once they've done it, they told me how strongly they feel, we sit around that table and we find a Nebraska common sense solution. And that's what the federal government needs to do. Instead, they put the boxing gloves on, they go to their two corners, they never talk to each other. That's not what Americans want. You're an American first, do what's right for the country. Uh, the public's way ahead of uh, us on this. They're willing to make priority uh, spending decisions. They do every day. They all have 100 bucks in their, in their billfold. That's all they spend. 
They don't go out and mortgage their future, and they're tired of the federal government doing it to their family and particularly to their kids. You know, talking about mortgage, mortgaging the future, you know, you're talking to some millennials here, uh, people that are really trying to start, you know, start small business, grow the economy, create jobs, but it's just got to be tough when we look at it from our vantage point, seeing that we're $52,000 each in debt, and it just seems like the taxes come from, from all other levels because it's got to be paid for somehow. Uh, could you talk a little bit about tax reform, and then maybe we could visit a couple moments about how health care is almost becoming a hidden tax for small businesses? It, it really is, and, and, and I applaud you for what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, I've got a 29-year-old son, uh, okay. CPA, did that for a couple of years. Now he's out on his own with a small business, and, and he's trying to grow that business. And so I can relate to what we're talking about, plus talking to Nebraskans. Uh, less regulation, less taxes allows companies uh, to grow their business. And so let them go out there and produce these great products, the innovation, the creativity of the marketplace, uh, I talk about it all the time. In Nebraska and in America, we've learned how to compete globally. We have learned how to compete all over the world. And for example, over in many countries, they're finding out low cost, low quality doesn't work. You've got to have good quality at a reasonable price. And that's what we can do in America. So you're seeing more and more manufacturing coming back uh, to America from overseas. And again, in order to do that, you've got to have a competitive tax environment. And that means generally lower taxes, as low as you can get them. Now, I still want to fund the services of government. We need to educate our, our children. We need to take care of those who are in unfortunate and challenging circumstances uh, for a period of time. We've got to build our roads and other infrastructure. But you have to prioritize what you're doing. And remember, we need more jobs, better jobs. And if you can do that every day, then we're going to move forward. I don't think people really understand that. You, know, you want companies to make profits because that means they're going to be hiring people and those people are the ones paying taxes and that it's an issue of you know getting more dollars into the system and then it becomes priority. Am I missing something here? No. In Nebraska, we believe profit is a good word because profit means you're going to grow your company and create more jobs. If you're not making any money, what's going to happen? You're going to lay off people. So, uh, again, in Nebraska, we understand when our businesses, our farms, our ranches, small and large, uh, businesses and farms make money. They're producing more of their product. They need more people to help them produce that product. We're going to grow our economy. No, that's exactly right. Governor, as you go around the state, I'm sure you visit with small businesses all the time. Are they talking about the ACA to you? Are they, are they concerned? Uh, you know, what's the word on the street? Um, they're off the roof, if I could use that term, because they're concerned. How's it going to impact their business? Uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi, I guess, said, you know, the Democrat the minority leader of the House, we've got to pass this bill so we can read and see what's in it. Well, now we're finding out what's in it, and it's killing small businesses. It's a job killer. And, you know, the, the businesses I talk to, small, medium, and large, they want to do something in terms of health care for their employees. But if you make it too doggone and, uh, expensive, they can't do it. The unknown, the uncertainty, uh, it's creating all sorts of problems. And particularly if you're in a company, 46, 47, 48 employees, you don't want to go above 50 because of the, quote, Affordable Care Act, right. which is the most unaffordable uh, legislation I've ever seen. And so that's what they're worried about. And I believe, and, and I've learned this from the business community in Nebraska, we've learned that the key to affordable health care is through wellness and prevention. If we can go out and, and get our people healthier, and we've got... Uh, a wellness program in the state of Nebraska. We're self-insured. We learn from the business community. It's about participation. And as a result of what we're doing, the last three years, our claims are down by $4 million. Our employees are healthier because they're out walking more. So fewer doctor visits, fewer hospital visits, fewer prescription drugs. That's the key to a more affordable health care system. But businesses are very, very concerned that they're not going to be able to afford it, they're not going to be able to take care uh, of their employees, and that's not a good situation. You had talked about uh, tax reform. One more question. I'm going to welcome in John Radhouse, our co-host, because he's taking some notes here. Um, talking about tax reform, and, and, and if we're seeing this shift towards high deductible plans and maybe some businesses looking more to fixing their costs through this defined contribution model, you know, is there something that we can do at the state level to kind of on the tax policy side make that more attractive for, for some of these companies? Well, we're certainly going to try to do whatever we can in that regard. And the key is overall lower taxes mm -hmm. to, to, to begin with. 
uh, uh, secondly, uh, we're going to continue to encourage wellness and prevention. The, it, it, when you talk about uh, uh, our own individual health care situation, it, it's about personal responsibility and personal accountability. Um, the other thing that I think is key for businesses, we tried to ask for uh, flexibility from the federal government, and they said no, is you need a series of options on health care. Uh, young people, uh, single, married, maybe without kids, you can live with a high deductible. Now, you get married, you're going to need a different plan. And then when you're a 60-year-old man, I don't know that you need maternity coverage as required by the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act. So they ought to go back, give us more flexibility, uh, let businesses and states figure out what makes sense for their individual area. And I don't have any problem saying in a high-density populated area like New York City or Boston, they may need to do it different than Nebraska. Fine, yeah. let them do it. Let us do what we need to do. Couldn't agree more, John. Yeah, no, I mean, and I and then I guess what's what is the talk among other states? Like when you say that, you know, in terms of how their their solution is working, and also just how do you pass that message down the wellness and prevention all the way down to you know maybe even the lowest income people, and in, in terms of getting them healthier. Well, if you think about it, it ought to be part of uh, our Medicaid program and other programs. You know, uh, I've got right here on my belt buckle my pedometer. I keep track of my steps all day long. I got how many you got so far? Uh, Six thousand sixty-three. We're not even at noon yet. I've been averaging for the last year fourteen thousand steps a day. That's five or six miles a day. And you know, when I started, it was about uh, seven thousand. Uh, we're all a little competitive among ourselves. When you got a pedometer, you keep track of it. You walk more. Uh, so no, I think that, that that's that's critical. And when I talk to other governors, we just want the flexibility to do what's right for our state. And again, California is different. Than Nebraska. Uh, West Virginia is different than Nebraska. I don't have any problem with them doing it differently than we do. And when you give the states the flexibility, we believe in states' rights in this state or in this, in this country, you're going to see a variety of programs, but they're designed to fit the demographics right. of your states. That's what's important. Right. What, about, what about rural health care? How is that issue? What do you see? How do you see that? Well, see, that's why I mentioned to you, what you're going to do in New York and Boston, where they're all in a much smaller area, I understand that. Now, you want to talk about rural health care. Uh, that's a whole different situation. It's not uncommon for our uh, uh, farmers and ranchers, people in rural Nebraska, they may try out, travel 30 or 40 miles to the nearest hospital. We've got to take that into account. Uh, so, again, we're, we're looking at... Uh, uh, telemedicine, more electronic uh, uh, capability uh, with hospitals and doctor's office. That's the flexibility I'm talking about. What is going to work in small town Nebraska is not what they need in New York City. But what they need in New York City is not what we need in small town Nebraska. Couldn't agree more. Visiting with Governor Dave Heineman, governor of the great state of Nebraska, talking about flexibility with the states. Do you think it'll ever get to the point where this law cannot be sustainable and it might fall on the states to have to figure it out themselves? Let, let's remember uh, what caused the debate. We've got a good health care system in America, but we needed to improve it. But what President Obama wanted to do was turn the whole thing upside down for 15 percent that weren't uh, insured. And so we ought to go back and revisit this. If we could repeal it and then replace it with something better, focus on wellness and prevention, all the ideas that we've talked about this morning, I think we would be better off. Uh, uh, again, it's the cost of health care that I heard from our citizens during this debate that bothered them, that every time they went to the hospital or doctor's office, it was too expensive. And again, we ought to get the health care professionals in the room and let's talk about it. How about tort reform? You're practicing defensive medicine because of uh, uh, laws through, throughout America. Uh, the other thing, it, it, again, about personal responsibility, everybody's got to have some stake in the game and understanding what the real health care costs are. And that's hard for most of us because we're part of an insurance package and we just show up and we think it's almost free. Well, it's not. And then the other thing, uh, we need more... Uh, uh, comparison shopping. Uh, you know, and if you have an emergency, you got to get there. But if you've got a procedure that could be done 30 days from now, try to compare hospital costs to how much it costs. Uh, we need more transparency in healthcare. That's awesome. Any final thoughts, Governor? 
Well, you know, I, I would just say uh, we're glad to have you in Nebraska. I want every Thank American you. to know if you want to start a business, the best place to do it is in Nebraska. We welcome you. We're going to keep driving taxes lower. We've got uh, limited regulations so that you can flourish using your creativity and your innovation uh, to grow. That's what it's all about. Uh, give you the opportunity to succeed, and it's unbelievable what Americans do. Not many states in America can you get to sit down with the governor and uh, talk about your business and health care. So thank you so much for your time here on the program, Governor. You're welcome.